Tough shot. Bawinkle with the rebound. The nice wall off of Hoff Arbor underneath. Anthony Tucker will try and turn around these ugly offensive numbers here in the second half for Iowa. Everything for the Hawkeyes staying on the perimeter. Davis carried the ball. To me, the one mismatch you have is Travis Bush is matched up with Matt Gatons. Get the ball to Gatons and get the heck out of the way and everyone else spot up. Tucker guarding Hoff Arbor. Hoff Arbor finding Damian Johnson, who banks it home. And on the other side, Licklider's upset at one point late in the non-conference season was the number one overall conference RPI. As of today, they're two. But I don't believe it's the second best conference. I think it's it's a good, solid middle league. Very tough in the middle. Everyone's alike. Michigan State, I think, far and away the class in this league. A three rolls home for Matt Gatons. That's a big shot for Iowa. And it gets the crowd back into it as well. Yeah, and that's Anthony Tucker creating off the dribble. Not off the ball screen. Let's see if Iowa can get a stop and then get out of their ball screen action in their half-court offense. Nolan spins. Can't get it to go. The follow, though, by Travis Bush. Another try for Gaten. He's got another three. Iowa didn't score for over 12 minutes, and all of a sudden, Gatons has six points in the last minute. Shot clock under 10. Nolan looks up and sees it. He'll launch a deep three. Oh, 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 oh. Davis drives with the jump step, draws the foul. Here at Carver Hawkeye Arena to the free throw line goes Jermaine Davis with 3.16 remaining in the second half, and he comes up short. That, that Todd Licklider loved, even watching him play in junior college at Kirkwood, just up the road. And the logic behind it was he wasn't the best player, but he was a winner. He was a good attitude guy, and he was a guy who could play at multiple positions. And look at him now. He's essentially the second tallest Iowa Hawkeye, as Iowa has tried to match the lack of size and athleticism in Minnesota by going small. There are no big men on the floor. Cyrus Tate out with an injury. And Jared Cole on the bench with four fouls. Nolan with the shot clock down to seven. Pulls up. Comes up way short on a run out. Peterson foul. But took the lead with their defense. Uh, they caused Iowa to shoot. They need penetration, not off a ball screen, just beating your man in order to create help and then kick off to their shooters. Peterson has 13. He leads all scorers. No player for Minnesota in double figures, and their lead is down to four. And if you're Al Nolan, you want to get in the lane, but now look to kick off to your shooters. Look to kick off to, to Blake Hoffarber, to Westbrook, to guys that can make plays. You have all guards around you. Trust them when the help comes. There's the penetration, and the kick instead to Bush. Way off the mark. Kelly tries to run it down. Guts. But they have to finish games and have to rebound the basketball better. On January 22nd, you saw Minnesota-Purdue. That should be a good one as well. How about Illinois? The improvement of Mike Davis, the improvement of Tisdale. Purdue, when they get healthy, I know they lost to Penn State last night, but playing without Hummel and Kramer. Off Arbor just about lost it to Kelly. Kelly does take it away. Hoff Arbor takes it back. Possession arrow with Iowa. Team tough, hard-nosed, blue-collar basketball. 
Very similar to Big Ten football. They keep trying to create a mismatch with ball screens, and Minnesota's just switching them. Davis with 10 to shoot. It's knocked away. Ends up with Tucker. Down to six on the shot clock. Tucker will drive it and draw the foul. Evans Bush, that's a that's an inexperience. I know he played at Cal Poly. He's played extensively. 83% at the line. And he's got a pair. It's a two-point game. Iowa now 11 at the line tonight as a team. Well, this is a great telling game for Minnesota. Ranked number 19 in the country, 13 and one, but can you win a game on the road, have a lead, one minute to go? They need to get penetration before they shoot, whether it's Nolan himself or Nolan kicking out for a jump shot. Nolan penetrates the kick out to Bush. He'll go down the lane and score. How about Travis Bush? He got the tip in, he got the big three, and now he gets a huge bucket. And he leads Minnesota. Timeout called by Todd Licklider. And Al Nolan then switches and guards him. Nolan's the best defender for Minnesota on the ball. Gotta go. Kelly wants to drive it. Gets into the lane. Hangs, can't hit, and the ball gets stuck. And that possession arrow gives it back to Minnesota. Win at Michigan in terms of record. You know, Wisconsin loses to Marquette, loses at home to Texas. Another timeout called by Minnesota. They go to Penn State, who's playing pretty well. Minnesota gets it in the backcourt. Westbrook quickly fouled by Kelly. Foul. And Westbrook have an undersized, really strong athletic guard has grown into being a heck of a player. Kelly needs to push and does. Lays it in around Westbrook. It's a four-point game once again. Hoff Arbor makes a tough catch and travel. In order to come back in that game where they were being blown out early on, they played a lot of man-to-man. -man. Couple of misses for Nolan. Here comes Gatons, down to 10 seconds to go. From the corner of three, is connected by Peterson. It's a one-point game. Five seconds to go. And Iowa calls their last timeout. Or is out of the mix by having him toss it in. Can he get it to Westbrook? And he has to call his last timeout. Time was winding down. Over the top. Make them go long. Johnson gets it into Westbrook, and the foul given by Peterson. And now allowing that to happen. To stop you, we're not going to give you free points. But I would foul. It's a three-point lead. Gatons wants to get it in and does to Kelly. Kelly from mid-court misses. And time expires. Not the shot that Iowa needed. There was over two seconds on the clock when Kelly let it go from mid-court.